Hello, Peter here. This is the first uh, of a series of videos where I'm going to show you how to create a blob shadow component. It's, a, it's also the first episode of a much larger tutorial series on faking dynamic light on Unreal Engine 4 for mobile platform projects. Uh, check out the video that I'm putting up below here so that you can, uh, can see the introduction to the whole series. In this tutorial, um, and in the whole series in fact, I'm going to assume that you have a basic experience and a basic knowledge of un an understanding of Unreal Engine 4. Uh, and that you know how to find your way around in the, in the editor. So with that said, let's get started. There is one thing uh, that is uh, really important with the method I'm going to use to create the blob shadows. And that is that the setting mobile HDR is actually checked. So you can do that by going to your project settings and then under engine rendering, just check if mobile HDR is set. If not, please check it. Otherwise it's okay. You can then close the window. Uh, the whole tutorial series is going to be created uh, as, as a package. So I'm going to create a directory here, a new folder, and call it SDL. SDL stands for Simulated Dynamic Light. And it's nice to, to gather all these stuff, all these things here that we're going to do. Uh, in that directory, I'm going to create another folder called Materials, like that. And in that one, I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to name that material M underscore blob shadow. Actually going to use camel case. Yes. And now we can open that new material in the material editor. Okay, first let's look at the uh, <clears throat> settings for this material. Material domain should be surface. Blend mode must be translucent. And shading model must be unlit. Now we have the opacity input, which is uh, what we need. Let's put it to the side a bit. As I said, we are going to create a blob shadow component. So this material is going to be manipulated and instantiated uh, dynamically. So we need some parameters. But uh, today we only need three just to demonstrate the actual method. And those three are shadow color, radius and hardness. So let's create the shadow color first, which is a vector parameter. And we call that one shadow color. We can leave the values at zero because black is a pretty accepted color for a shadow. If you want, you can make it pink. It doesn't matter. It still works. You can connect this one to the emissive color input. Now let's create a scalar parameter. We call it radius and the default value, oh, let's set 50. And another one, and let's call that one hardness. It will become clear what those things do later on. We set the default value to one. Um, just organize this a bit. And now for the real meat of this material, the magic. And that is, let's create a node by start typing behind. And then you choose from miscellaneous world position behind translucency. And that's an interesting node. And we are going to use that to 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 give the impression that behind a translucent material our opacity mask appears um, so we have this one let's create another one and that is object position ws which stands for world 
space. And what we need to do is subtract the world position guide translucency from the object position. And now we have everything set up to create the mask. It is a bit cramped still, that's because here we're going to create the node sphere mask. That one. Now this one is inbuilt and it just creates a spherical mask. Uh, later on we are going to remove this one and make our own function. Uh, actually in the next episode we will start with that because as you will see we need much more control than we can get from this one. But for now just demonstrating the, the, um, the method it will do nicely. So connect radius to the radius input, the hardness parameter to the hardness input and now we can take the output of the subtract and connect it to the A. If we click this one, oh, the B doesn't seem to have a default value yet. Then we create, we drag out of it, create a constant, which is zero. Now the output of this mask, we connect to opacity. So this material is now ready for our demonstration purposes. So we can save the material. and close the material editor. Now, somewhere in your level, create a cube, place it, and now drag the newly created blob shadow material onto this cube. And voila, you see you have your blob, sh blob shadow. Now, if we drag onto the z-axis, you see that it is indeed a sphere, a spherical mask. Now you also understand why blob shadows tend to be smaller and even disappear when the character is jumping for instance. That's a pretty cool effect. It is that node translucency, a world position behind translucency that creates this effect. Uh, the, the material really is translucent but it places behind it or it seemingly places behind it our opacity mask. Let's put a sphere in that place. Let's try to get it on top of it. Yeah, that's quite okay. And you now see as well that there is some issues with this. That the shadow also projects on the object that seemingly creates the shadow. That is why we want to create our own opacity mask because one of the things we want to do is the, to have the ability to cut off that mask in the Z direction, in the Z axis, just above the ground for instance, so that we don't get black stuff onto the object that, that is creating the shadow. Also, we want the spherical form of that to be but much more elongated, so we want to have an ellip ellipsoid instead. That we are going to do in the next episode. For now, let's just play a bit with this one and let's add our shadow cube into the sphere. So now they are connected and you see that that makes it a bit more realistic. Uh, let's return shortly to our material and change the default value of hardness to say 0.6. Save that one. And now you see that the that the shadow has become slightly more fuzzy and that too is a, a very nice effect which I use a lot and obviously radius will make the radius bigger uh, I think that is enough for this uh, video 
uh, enough to think about and play with. So uh, I'll see you in the next uh, episode where we are going to work more on our opacity mask. See ya! Hello, Peter here again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching this video. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Below there is a link to the introduction video of the whole series. And don't forget to subscribe so you're the first to know when the next episode is up. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!